well, well, welcome to River Point in West End Church. I want to say Happy New Year to all my friends watching online, all my friends in Missouri City, and uh, all my friends that, uh, man, I've just missed you guys so much. I just got to say that. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan, a friend of River Point. I told you I would come back and visit every now and then, and I'm here to fulfill that promise. So here we are. Also want to say hello to all the men at the Ramsey unit. We love you guys. So glad that you're, you're tuning in. Uh, I believe that today's message as we kick off the year is going to, I think it's going to give you a shot in the arm. Not just, not just for your life, but for, for your faith. And, and here's the, I know I'm, I'm probably supposed to tell you that this is your year. 2023 is going to be it. However, we did that in 2020, and guess what? It was not our year, all right? So I think we've been a little hesitant to say that now. But here's, I think this year could be different if you want it to be. Because uh, here's the deal. I, I, I got, I've got one foot in corporate America, and I've got one foot in ministry. So I get uh, um, an opportunity to sit across from all kinds of people. And, and here's what I've learned about people that... Uh, that are really successful and, and achieve a lot of their goals and, and people that, that don't. And the reality is, is that I, I like to use this phrase a lot. There's levels to this thing. There's levels to this thing. And, and some of us have already experienced that just within the first week of the year, because some of us, we felt really, really good about our workout plan and our diet plan. And then you meet that one person and you know who I'm talking about, like that one person that's in overdrive, you know, like you feel good about the miles you ran and then you run into that person that's doing 75 hard. You're like, why, why are you doing that? We were having a great day. And then now here you come. Like, I love talking to my friends. I'm like, man, I ran a couple miles today, and then you got that triathlete friend that does 10 miles for a warm-up, and you realize very quickly there's levels to this thing. I mean, have you ever thought that, like, you had a lot of money, and then you met somebody with, like, a lot, a lot of money, and you realize very quickly there's levels to this thing? It, I, here's what I know to be true. Um, when we think about the levels that you and I can live at, well, I, I, I think it really boils down to, to really two I think we could find ourselves in a place where we are coasting or we're thriving. And, and, and what I found to be true in corporate America and in church is that most people find themselves in that coasting category. They find themselves going through the motions. They find themselves checking boxes as if their life is on autopilot. They have jobs they tolerate. They're in relationships that they tolerate. Dare I say, I believe that 2023 can be a year where you truly thrive. That's why I wrote a book. I don't write a book just to write a book. I, no, I write a book because I really want to help people. So uh, this book that I wrote, Leveling Up, 12 Questions to Elevate Your Personal and Professional Development, uh, just came out uh, this past December, and uh, it was number two on the Wall Street Journal. Can you believe that? What in the world is going on? Now, here, here's what I've learned um, through our executive coaching practice and through our ministry. I believe questions often help us better then answers, if I can equip you with the right questions that you can be asking yourself on a daily, a weekly and yearly basis, well, then you put yourself in a position to, to be growing when other leaders aren't in the room. And so today, um, I don't want to just talk to you about my book. Okay, we, we showed you the QR code. If you want to get that on Amazon, hey, that's great. I would appreciate that. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about some questions that I didn't write. I want to talk to you about some questions that Jesus wrote. I like to say it like this. Jesus is the answer, <laughs> but Jesus has some phenomenal questions. In fact, if you study it, Jesus uh, asked over 138 questions in the Gospels. I want to look at four. I want to look at four that I believe are going to help you take your faith in your relationship with God to a whole new level. Question number one is this, and here's the question that Jesus asked. He says, if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? This is a, a part of a, a Sermon on the Mount, what scholars call the Sermon on the Mount. It was like a three-day conference that Jesus had on a mountain. And 
and, he, and he's talking to his disciples and his followers about this idea of not just loving your neighbors. <clears throat> Jesus takes things to another level. He says, hey, I don't want you to love your, love your neighbor. I actually want you to love your enemies. And, and it's not, and like, this is not a fun verse. Like nobody's got this on their dashboard. You know what I mean? It's like, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Like whose life verse is this? You know what I mean? What child is memorizing this one? I mean, he says, you have heard that it was said, they were literally taught to hate their enemies. Religious people taught them to do. In fact, some even taught that it was your God-given duty to hate anybody that is against Jewish people. Like they were literally taught, yes, yes, love your neighbor, hate your enemies. Jesus comes along, he goes, <laughs> I got good slash bad news for you. We're doing things differently. And, and let's just be honest. I'm not sure that in 2023, things are much different. We're not only taught to hate our enemies. Nobody has to tell us to do that. We don't need to be taught that. We just do that. We're also taught, and what I believe is often the divided states of America, we are taught to have an enemy. Isn't that true? I mean, aren't we all like taught like, hey, there is an us and there is a them. And, and you need to pick some. They're not with us. You're like, I, I thought we worked with them. I thought they were her friend. Isn't that our cousin? Like, aren't you married to them? Like, like, but isn't it interesting that we live in a society where some people will make enemies out of friends? It's interesting. You can be following somebody on the internet and that was somebody that you followed because you liked them and now you follow them because you don't. <laughs> isn't it interesting? You will follow the leaders of your enemies just to see what the enemy's up to. <laughs> And, and I, just, I just have to wonder if that's good for our soul. It's like, let's just be honest. I think, isn't it easy for us to be kind to our kind? Isn't it easy to like, for the people that are like you, look like you, that you're just like, man, it's cool. Of course, we're, we're, we're cool. I'm going to just be honest. Like, I... I really, really love and can get along with people who love shoes. Like, if you love shoes, I'm automatically 10% nicer to you. I don't know why. I just, it's just the truth. Like, automatically, there's just going to be a natural connection to which Jesus would go, of course it is. Because that's you being kind to your kind. And, and, and what I know to be true about you and what I know to be true about me in 2023 is, is we're going to find ourselves in conversations where we just feel like we have to be right. And when we do, did you know that we all have things that we're going to die for? We also have things that we'll, well, we'll, we'll defend them. And then we'll have things that we'll discuss. But how many conversations do we not feel the temptation <laughs> to die on a hill? Like, you're wrong, and I don't know where in the world you get your thoughts from, but they're not from planet Earth. You're a moron, and I'm amazing. Like, that's how some of our conversations go. I just have to wonder if you and I, in 2023, could move some of our conversations from the die for category to how about we get coffee and talk about it? Like, can I, just, I just want to submit this to you. Do you have to be right in 2023? What do you win for? Is there a prize? Do you get a bonus for it? What's going to happen if, if you're... I just, I'm just telling you what breaks my heart. You hear me talk, have you heard me talk about this before? It's, what breaks my heart is watching people who are no longer in relationships with people that they love all because they died on a hill. And sometimes I just look back on that hill and I just go, you're not on speaking terms because of a mask. 
In the moment, it felt like it was a hill, but in hindsight, it's, it was just a health and safety protocol. I, I just, I just really like Jesus' question because he, he, he's, he's going, hey, like, let me rephrase Jesus' question. Do you really want to be like everybody else? Like, even if you're not a Christian here today, maybe a friend sent you this link, whatever your, your situation may be. Isn't it interesting? Jesus is going, do you really want to be like everybody else? If you want to be like everybody else, then yeah, hate your enemies. Because that's not hard. But I want to invite you to do something different. I want to invite you to have a completely different life. What would it look like if you decided to be different. And I, I got to admit, I love Jesus. I just think some of the things he says, it's like, Jesus, pray for those who persecute you. Jesus, I barely pray for people I like, let alone them. <laughs> but I just, but I, as difficult as it is, I do think it's brilliant. So like the next time somebody posts something that just infuriates you, the next time you feel disrespected, the next time you are at a holiday table and you have that, that passive aggressive moment, in that moment I could just only imagine what it would look like for you and for me and what it would do for our soul. If in that moment we said, God, would you bless them? God, would you move on their heart? God, would you show up in ways like you never have? God, would you begin to, to speak to that person? Imagine if it's your boss and, and, and you just, you just want to go off and it's, it was the straw that broke the camel's back and you just want to snap. But I got a feeling, even if you're not a Christian, you want to be different. So if you want to be different... Like, Consider Jesus' invitation. So, you know, as, as much as I feel like my boss is my enemy, he's in the category of people I'm supposed to be praying for. So, God, would you show up and reveal yourself to maybe my boss who does not know you, doesn't have a relationship with you? Well, I pray that he would. I pray that she would. And isn't it interesting? As you pray for people who persecute you, and as you begin loving your enemies, <laughs> it changes you. <laughs> That's why I think Jesus is a genius. He's going, hey, uh, maybe it isn't even about them, but I want you to take your relationship with me to another Question number two, I think it's vitally important if we're going to take our faith to a new level in 2023. Question number two is, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? <laughs> I love Jesus. His questions are amazing because he, he's just going, some of you think that worry is going to do something for you that it cannot. I have never met a person that says, I got a life plan for 2023. This is what we're going to do. We're going to worry. It's going to be awesome. Nobody says that. Like, no, like there's never been a leader that says, guys, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to grow. We're just going to worry. I need you to worry. If, if you could just worry twice as much as her, we're going to be awesome. Like nobody does it. And here's the deal. I think that you and I have gotten in the habit of worrying. I, I love what James Clear says in, in his book. He says, your current habits are perfectly designed to deliver your current results. Read it again. He says, your current habits are perfectly designed to deliver your current results. So if you look at your current results, they are a result of your current habits. And, and, and the question that Jesus has for us, he's beckoning us. He's going, can, can we just talk about it for a minute? What results has worry brought your life lately? I know it's a habit, but you, it's a habit I think that you and I, we have to, we have to question. Because... If you and I aren't intentional in 2023, you and I are going to end up with a pretty long worry list, aren't we? I mean, it's, it's very, very long. I mean, just think about what, what's on our worry list. Think about what's on yours. I, for some of us, it's relationship status. And it doesn't really matter what your status is. Every status has a little bit of worry with it. 
You're single and engaged. You're worried the other person could be crazy. You could be the crazy one. There's lots of worry there. Marriage worry. We're going to make it. Divorce worry. I mean, all the relationship status have a little bit of worry that can come with them. Once again, Jesus is going, is worry going to help your relationship? I mean, what else could we add to the worry list? <laughs> Money. I mean, how many of us just came into the year with just some debt that's just hanging over us, a medical bill, a bad business deal? I mean, it's just, you don't hear any of the investment people real happy coming into 2023. You know, they're real quiet all of a sudden. It's just like, why? Because it's, well, it's, they could just also bring with them a little bit of, a little bit of worry. Are we going to recover? Recession. What else is on our worry list? Well, health. Do I even need to explain this one? From COVID to influenza. I went to the doctor in December. You know what my doctor said to me? He said, I think you might have that ragweed. I said, <laughs> what'd you say, doc? What's it called? Who, who's in charge of naming this stuff? You can't tell nobody you got that ragweed. You know what I'm saying? And you know we come up with nicknames for every sickness, right? You got the vid. You got the vid. It's, it's COVID-19. No, you got that vid. You know, it's just like ragweed. I can't go into the streets telling people I'm struggling with a little bit of ragweed sniffling around. Just a whole new thing to, to worry about. I can't even explain it to my wife. What the doctor say? You don't want to know, baby. I got that ragweed, all right? Just, just, just give me two days, you know? I'll knock this thing out. What else is on our worry list? Politics. <laughs> Enough said. They said it for me. Started moaning. The, I, didn't even, I didn't even say it. I just put it on the screen. But the, uh, instantly, there can, we could easily sit back and look at a headline and just worry. <laughs> for those of us that are parents, <laughs> kids. And that's its own sermon series. Like we could just talk about the, the amount of things we worry about specifically just with them. They got their own list. And I'm not even talking about just the little ones. I'm talking about empty nesters that are worried about their 30-year-olds. I heard it gets worse. <laughs> I mean, maybe you're in business and just things just aren't going well. I mean, we just... Pfft. What a list. And if I could just speak freedom over some people this weekend, I just hope this doesn't ruin your whole year. Might I suggest something different than worry? Prayer. Here's what 1 Thessalonians says. It, 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 it's the second shortest verse in the Bible after Jesus wept, okay? If you only memorize this verse, I think all of us can do that this year, okay? Go home and say, guess what? I memorized the Bible verse, okay? I'm not trying to brag, but 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray continually, which is all the time. It sounds exhausting, if I'm honest. But the reason I think it's genius is because most of us worry continually. I just want to submit a picture for you, whether you're a Christian or not. What would your life look like if you prayed more than you worried? Just, just, you, just you tell me, what would your year look like if you prayed more than you worried? And so all I want you to do is maybe as a family, maybe you're in a small group, Maybe in your Bible study, what I want you to do together is I want you to write down your worry list. I want you to write them all out because your list is probably bigger than the one I put on the screen. You're like, Ryan, you missed a few things, bro. You got to add some stuff to your repertoire, but you don't know my life. I want you to write them down. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down your worry list. And then what I want you to do is I want you to cross out the word worry. And now what you have. Is your prayer list. Jesus is a genius. 
She's going, but what, what, what could worry? Worry's not going to help you. I've just, I've just never seen it become a great life plan. But I've seen prayer move mountains. And so if you showed up here today or if you're watching today, if you're at the Ramsey Unit, you just got this weight of worry sitting on your shoulders. Make this a year of prayer for you. Turn your worry list into a prayer list. Question number three. It's very powerful. It could take your faith to another level. It says, why, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? You and I have the exact same superpower. We are all really good at seeing what other people need to work on. <laughs> I mean, isn't that true? I mean, it's like we all know what our boss needs to do better, how our spouse could improve in 2023. Like, we want to give them goals. Like, hey, I got a couple things that you could work on this year. I don't know if you thought about it, but I thought about it for you. So here it goes. But Jesus is going, hey, start with the mirror. Uh, the, the second question in, my, in uh, the book that I wrote is, uh, that helps people level up is, is, what's it like to be on the other side of me? I think everybody needs to be asking themselves that question. What's it like to be on the other side of me? And I just don't think people ask themselves that question enough. What's it like to be married to you? What's it like to be on the other side of dating you? What's it like to be on the other side of being parented by you, led by you, stuck in a group chat with you, in a fantasy football league with you, to golf with you, to travel with you, to eat with you? What's it like to be on the other side of your macaroni and cheese? It's like there is a lot to be across from you. And some of you might be thinking, what's it like to be on the other side of me? It's amazing. Are you sure it's amazing? Have you checked with anybody? It, here's the deal. What is it like to be on the other side of you? Well, it could be fun. It could be exhausting. It could be inspiring. It could be socially awkward. It could be a lot of things. But I think that you and I should walk into every room and every Zoom with a little bit of consideration that perhaps we have a speck of sawdust in our own eye before trying to deal with somebody else's. Do you want to know the number one person who is helping me see what it's like to be on the other side of me? It's my eight-year-old son. We spend a great deal of time together. He's on a couple of different basketball teams. I've almost gotten kicked out of games, guys. Things have just gone awry in my life, in case you're wondering how things are going. And, and he's just been helping me see some things that I just couldn't see on my own. What's it like to be on the other side of my parenting What's it like to be on the other side of being married to me? What's it like to be on the other side of working with me? What's it like to be on the other side of being friends with me? You're dealing with a high caliber, fun person who is always multitasking. You're dealing with a person who it's very, very difficult to get his undivided attention. It's like my son can see when I'm talking to him and it's almost like I'm somewhere else at the same time thinking about an email or thinking about where I'm going to be going next. And while I can think of a hundred things that my son can work on, I have to step back and look in the mirror and go, man, what does life look like when I put my phone away and really give the people I love the most my undivided attention? So before I hop on a plane and go help other people take things to another level, I ought to pause and pray and go, Lord, is there something that you want to do in me to help me go to the next level? This last question is one that I think is very, very important for you in 2023. Do you believe that I am able to do this? How's your faith today? You got a lot of people that are going to ask you a lot of questions this year. Hey, how you doing? How's the kids? Huh? Before we get things cracking, before we get 
back into chaos. How's your faith? How's your faith in Jesus? Here's the deal. I, I hope you get out of debt this year. I, I, I hope you... I hope you're doing 75 hard and you just, you just crush your physical goals, okay? I, I, I hope that you stick with your diet at least till Thanksgiving. Probably not, but I just, I hope, I hope that, that that goes well for you. I just I hope your kids get good grades. I hope you find that special person. I hope you get that promotion. But if all of that happens in your faith, dims in any kind of way. What does it matter? I hope that you're fit. Do you believe that Jesus can do some things through and in and for your life that others would consider? Miracles. Do you know who Jesus asked this question to? Two blind men who had come to him and said, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus responds with this question. He goes, do you believe that I am able to do this? Like, what's the thing you struggle to believe that God can do in 2023? Like, what is, what is your, what, what's the thing that you would go, Ryan, cool church stuff, man, nice speech up there, but... Probably not going to happen. You don't know the situation. Whatever that is, get your faith up. I'm just one of those crazy Jesus people that thinks he can do the impossible and that he's not done with your life. Maybe you look back at 2022 and think, man, you, you made a mess of your life, your family, your career. Maybe you've got some decisions that you regret. I just, I think God wants to do some things in you. I believe God's got some incredible things for you. I think God wants to do some incredible things through you. And I realize that you could step into a new year with some disappointment. My hope and prayer today is that you leave with a little bit of faith. And if you're low on some, I will loan you mine. I truly believe that the best is yet to come for you. And I pray that this would be a year that you pray some big prayers. So in, in summary, question number one, if you're writing these down, so I recommend that you do so. Question number one is this. If you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do you really want to be just like everybody else? Pray for some of those people that you cannot stand. <laughs> Question number two. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Make a worry list. Turn it into a prayer list. Question number three. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? I think all of us got to look in the mirror and go, man, what do I need to work on? This year, And the last question, do you believe that I am able to do this? I pray that this is the year that you pray some prayers that you've been afraid to pray for a very, very long time. Perhaps you have a child that has walked away from the Lord and you go, man, Ryan, you just don't know what they're into. I don't. God does. I, you, you might be praying for a promotion that is completely out of your league and you're completely unqualified for it. I know, and so does God. And You'd be surprised what can happen when you and I take our life and all of the things that we just think are so important and we just go, God, this, it's yours. My year, my, my week, my day, Lord, it's... It's all yours. I pray that many blessings happen in your life and in your family. But what's it all for if our faith and our relationship with God doesn't grow? That's my prayer for us at the beginning of this year. God, I thank you so much for this amazing church. God, I pray that we would wrestle with these questions. That these would be some questions that help shape 2023 for us. May this be a year where we truly grow closer 
to you. In Jesus' name I pray, everybody said, amen.